My name is Mats uh, Andreas Danielsen. Uh, I'm 19 years old and I'm from Norway. Today I'm going to uh, give you a speech about the aspect of trust. And I was inspired to talk about trust because trust, a very important part of Norwegian culture, is under, uh, under pressure due to the recent terrorist attacks that took place in Norway. And I, I was inspired, I felt emotionally inspired to talk about it, talk about this because I myself lost three friends in the terrorist attacks. Um, and it feels like an attack on all of Norway, uh, on our, our ways. So what I, wa what I want to like answer is, is Norway's greatest vulnerability also its greatest strength? And then, I, then we need to know what is really trust. Trust is, in my opinion, uh, the firm reliance on the integrity and ability or uh, character of a person, institution or a thing. And in Norway, um, we Norwegians have a, a deep faith, they trust the, uh, the political institutions a lot. They, they trust their politicians uh, and we have a great trust towards each other. And it is this trust that was just recently abused. But I will come back to that later. Because first I want to explain why it is important with tr uh, trust in society. Um, because love levels of trust between the people and the political institutions and between people often makes, society, often makes more corruption, crime, uh, and economic inequality. Uh, people, there, there's more friction between people, if you understand what I mean. Uh, while a society with high levels of trust between the institutions and people is often a society with less violence and crime and higher productivity, more investments, more tourism, uh, a more pros prosperous uh, economy. Uh, and this trust often creates kindness between people. As in, when people can trust each other, it's easier to be kind and it, it's easier to be generous. So it creates more generosity. Um, but Just recently, this way of living uh, was an, it, it is today under attack uh, because, as you perhaps know, uh, last Friday, uh, a week, uh, last weekend, uh, a bomb went off in Oslo, um, right next to the prime min uh, office of the prime minister, uh, and many very important government buildings, and it basically destroyed the entire. Yeah, it destroyed a, a lot of buildings, uh, important institutions, um, and killed eight people in Oslo. Uh, and I'm really happy that both my father and mother and my aunt were on holidays because they all work in this area and could very easily have been among the victims. Uh, so I pers I'm, I'm very personally very emotional about this topic. Um, but it's terrible what took place. Because what he did, uh, Anders Breivik, which is, was the attacker, he had a car bomb that went off and destroyed all these political institutions that, that, uh, institutions that we trust so much. It's like you can basically walk into the office of the prime minister, almost. Like you, can, you can walk into uh, the reception and you can walk into the ministries and it's really easy you know, to get in touch with the people in power, the people that make decisions, uh, because there's so little distance between those governing and those being governed. Um, and this is ab about trust. There's a lot of trust between the politicians and the people. And this is an attack on our democracy, on our way of living. And it's an abuse of trust. Uh, the man, if you are able to see, so this man is the attacker. On the some, he is on the island, uh, Utøya Island, uh, 
30 minutes from where I live, uh, right outside of Oslo. And he dressed up as a police officer. And in Norway, we put a deep faith in our police forces, like we trust the police. So when he came and pretended to be a police officer that will just check everything's OK after the bombing in Oslo, where he, like, one, one hour after the bombing, he took the car and went to the island and with a machine gun and bombs. Uh, and his goal was to kill as many people as possible to spread his ideas about anti-multiculturalism. He is basically a racist. Uh, he's against Muslims and he believes in an all-white Norway. And he attacked the summer camp, which was for the, was for the Labour part, Youth Party, uh, a party that is very pro-multiculturalism. Um, and he killed 68 people, uh, mainly youth our age, uh, people between 13 and 25. And uh, you can see the victims lying around. It, it's censored, but it's, it's terrible to see, the, see it on the television. How he misused the trust that we put in police, because what he did, he came shooting people, and people went hiding. And then he would run up in the forest and say, it's OK, it's OK, police is here. You can come, come out. You know? And people came out because, because we trust the police. And they believed him to be a police officer. And then he shot them. So trust in Norwegian society is very, right now, very controversial. Uh, as in, it's in under deep pressure by people who thinks, uh, think that perhaps our trust, deep trust in other people also board, like borders to, it's almost the same as naivety. Um, and um, we, he's, fortunately, he's now in jail. Um, probably, he will probably be charged with crimes against humanity, which will give 30 years in prison. And he will probably never get out because he, because of his psychological condition, you have to renew the um, imprisonment and so on. But what we are afraid of now is that this abuse of trust, this attack on Norwegian culture, on the Norwegian democracy, on Norwegian trust, perhaps will change us, and that is something we will not allow. I will not allow that. Um, Norwegians are really, really sad. The atmosphere in, Nor in Norway right, right now is sadness, but we are also really angry at his attack on our culture. On, we will not allow him to change our ways. Because if, in my opinion, if we let him make more distrust between the security, between security and each other and police and important political institutions like places, then he will win and we will not allow him to win.